of course it. Hmm? Hey everyone, my name is Jessica. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. So, um, you'll notice that it's a bit of a different layout and that's because I'm sitting in front instead of standing in front of my bookshelf. But that's not what we're here to discuss. Today I'm going to be showing you all the books that I read in the months of September and October. The reason why I decided to change it up and have it, um, have my wrap-ups together is because from September 15th to October 15th was Latinx Heritage Month and there were two readathons that I participated in. Um, if you remember my Latinx uh, readathon TBR video. Um, so it was going to cut in the middle and it was just going to be really weird for my wrap ups. So I just decided to mash the two together. Um, was that a good idea? That remains to be seen. In the month of September, I read a total of eight books. And in the month of October, I read nine books. So overall, I read 17 books in two months. Not bad. Um, I actually hit a bit of a reading slump. So that's why I wasn't able to read as much of books as I wanted to, like finish my TBR. Honestly, I don't think I really came close to finishing my TBR. Anyway, let's just get on to the video. First, in September, I read Rogues Rushed In, and that is... Um, it was two books, it was like two novellas in mashed into one book and that was written by Tessa Dare and Christy Caldwell. The first book inside, um, the duology, I guess, um, His Bride for the Taking and that was written by Tessa Dare. Uh, His Bride for the Taking is about a girl named Mary Clayton. She gets left at the altar, um, on her wedding day, obviously. For, to prevent her from, like, the scandal, her brother's best friend, Lord Sebastian Byrne, he steps up to the plate and he decides to marry her. Basically Sebastian has like reservations about marrying her because he thinks that there should be like the bro code I guess um, and you should never try to do anything with your best friend's sibling. Yeah the other novella inside the book is His Duchess for a Day by Christy Caldwell. This is about a woman named Elizabeth Terry. She works at like um, she works as a teacher inside like a finishing school and she's passing herself off as a widow because to be honest in the olden days you can't really do much if you were a single or married and basically she's passing again she's passing herself off as a widow and she's trying to forget the marriage to her um, childhood best friend but she is found by Crispin Ferguson who is the Duke of Harrington and also her husband so he finds her basically to give her one request and that is to be like publicly act as his duchess for at least one day so they were like childhood like best friends sweethearts and we find out like what happened what caused um elizabeth to run away i don't rate novellas and if my were uh i love tessa dare so if i were uh overall i think i give the duology like uh 3.75 stars um they were quick and easy reads. Uh, I just <laughs> was starting, I felt myself getting into my reading slump. That's why I wasn't able to read them as quickly. So the next book that I finished in September was A Lesson in Thorns by Sierra Simone. I did a buddy read with this with Delaney, Sammy, and there was someone else in the group chat, Tay. We basically all read, like we finished it kind of in this, around the same time. Um, I gave this a four star uh the reason why i know a lot of people first of all i know there's like some controversy regarding the second book um but and i know that a lot of people enjoyed it and they gave it five stars the reason why i didn't give it five stars because like i found the ending very predictable like it did not surprise me at all i didn't get shocked at all because of the ending but i do plan on continuing on with this series so are we Google the Fool? Probably but I want to know what happens. <laughs> okay so the next book that I read is Romancing the Duke by Tessa Dare. This is the first in the Castles Ever After series. This is about a girl named Isolde Ophelia Goodnight. Um, she is the daughter of a famous author who wrote about like fairy tales and knights and princesses. Her father wrote her as like the heroine of the series so since she was like really little as she grew up a lot of people still saw her as like 
kind of a child so things she found herself never really that she would never really have like a great romance because people continue to see her as a child so she ends up inheriting a castle um but when she goes to the castle she finds that there is someone already living there for the most part does not he's like no this is my castle so she tries to strike a bargain with him that way they can try to work something out with each other. I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was so cute. It's a four star. Tech I haven't even rated it technically inside Goodreads, but I would give it a four star. It was really cute. The next up is the first book that I read for Latinx Heritage Month, and that is Sal and Gabby Break the Universe by Carlos Hernandez. Um, this is a middle grade book, um, and the author is Cuban. Carlos is Cuban, and um, so are Sal and Gabby. So this is about a boy named Sal. He moves to Florida with his stepmom and his um, father and he goes to the school where like the students are in like the arts. Um, he, Sal is actually a magician. So it starts off on his third day of school and he actually ends up getting, for the third day in a row, he goes, he gets sent to the principal's office because apparently he had this like chicken this dead chicken um magic no oh. he from what the students had seen that he had magic this raw chicken inside the school bullies um locker here we meet gabby she's very ambitious very smart she is student council president uh, she is the editor of the school paper she goes to the principal's office to be yasmani who is the bully um his lawyer so that way she can defend him into not becoming expelled how sal does his magic is like it manipulates the universe and time and space and that can actually break a hole into the universe so it's up to Sal and Gabby to try to fix it. There's like representation for diabetes, for type 1 diabetes, because Sal has type 1 diabetes. That Gabby, actually, she is Cuban, but she it doesn't seem like she speaks or really understands Spanish. So I thought that was a really cool because, you know, not every Latinx kid speaks or understands Spanish. Really cool to read about as someone who understands but does not speak it fluently. So yeah, I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. Next up, I read Blanca and Roja by Anna Marie McLemore. This book is about two sisters, one Blanca and Roja. Um, they, all the girls in their family go through like this curse where one of them is, after they reach like 15 or 16 I think it is, um, they get taken one of them has to get taken by swans and become a swan blanca and roja don't want that to happen to them so they try to do whatever they can to trick the the swans into not choosing any of them along the way we also meet two boys who they are also drawn into what's going on and they become like important parts with the del cisne sisters blanca and roja deals a lot it's like was a book that I have been looking forward to reading a lot. Um, mostly, I'm not gonna lie, because of the cover and that really drew my attention. Blanca and Roja deals with like colorism. They deal with like sisterhood and you know like jealousy amongst like family and all that stuff. Um, and there is also a representation for LGBT characters. One of the boys, his name is Paige, and Paige actually uses Paige's trans boy who uses he, him, and she, her pronouns. I give this a five star. It was like really cool because like I love reading about magical realism and Anna Marie really knows how really knows what they're doing in writing this stories um so yes this just made me super excited to read more of their works next up I finished Capturing the Devil by Carrie Maniscalco this is the fourth and the final book in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series I gave this um a five out of five stars I actually buddy read this with um Julie from Julie's Book Endeavors. I'm gonna link her channel in the description and everybody else I mentioned I'm linking their channels. can't really say much about this book because it is the fourth book so I don't want to give spoilers but I went through so many emotions when I was reading it. Literally, uh, she was snapchatting me like the whole time about her reactions and stuff like that and it was just so good. I can't believe that the story is now over. I just it was so good. So if you guys have a chance to read Stalking Jack the Ripper the series I recommend it. I know a lot of people don't like the series, but 
me personally I loved it next up and I have a physical copy of this book but I don't know where it's at so I'm just gonna hold it up right here um, but I read The Hole by Jose de Vueltas so The Hole is actually like an essay written by Jose de Vueltas this is a translated work um, it's set in a Mexican prison during the 1960s it was a very hard and like heavy book it was good but like I was I was able to read it in one sitting because it's like a little pamphlet so it follows three inmates inside the prison who are trying to sneak drugs in with the help of their two girlfriends and their mom there's violence there's drugs there's like really bad language against women and this isn't a book that you need to read to be honest but it's a book that if you sh if you don't mind like those type of um contents inside a book I think you should read it uh the ending like literally I felt like it was a book that I needed to read out loud like I'm reading it and I'm literally like speaking the words out loud like I'm reading it loud to aloud to a class yes it was very good at the end I literally like I was lying down and then at the end I literally like sat up sat up I had to sit up was to give it a rating I would give it like a 4.5 star it was good but it was like it was harsh but you know next up i read aristotle and dante discover the secrets of the universe um i actually listened to the audiobook because i or because the narrator is actually Lynn manuel miranda okay so this is about two boys ari and dante they meet each other during the summer in the 1980s i think ari he's a character that I really resonated with um, there were just some quotes specifically about Ari that I really was like this is me one of the quotes that really I felt was this is my problem I want other people to tell me how they feel but I'm not so sure I want to return a favor and like me it was just such a good book for me to read and like I think one of the reasons why I hesitated to because this book has been on my TBR for so long like not physically but like I knew that it's a book that I wanted to read it's like I don't know I feel like I knew it was a book that I was gonna resonate with um especially Ari um but anyway it is about two boys going through the summer um becoming friends becoming best friends it's also like a coming of age story becoming the people that they want to be um I gave this a five star I'm doing like a really shitty job of describing what this book is about but it was just so good honestly if you can pick this up I recommend you pick it up so next up I read Sabrina and Corinna stories by Cali Fajardo Anstein this is a bunch of like short stories about indigenous or Latina women it's primarily set in like Colorado slash like Denver Colorado and like little towns around there the stories are very heavy hitting to like each one of them like honestly I don't think there was like a lot of the stories that were like happy ending because it's about like tragedy like like especially indigenous women they go through so much tragedy because of the way they are treated the way people see them um so there were times when I honestly had to take like a break between reading stories there were times when I literally like finished one story and I had to like I literally just put the book down and I just stared at my ceiling overall I would give the book like 4.5 stars which I know short stories they're a little more difficult to really like get into because like they're so short but each story was so heavy hitting you couldn't help but getting like so into like feeling for each of the characters because it was just so much like heartbreak and some of the, it seemed like some of them were um intertwined with each other but yes I thought that book was like so good it was very hard to read at times but honestly I think it's a book that you should read too so next up I read The King of Bourbon Street by Thea DeSalle. This is about a man who is a hotel chain mogul. Sol is a recently divorced man. Because of like certain things that have happened like Hurricane Katrina, his father's death and his recent divorce, it's like he's like in a bit of a rut. Um, he's lost interest in a lot of things. Then he meets a girl named Ariana Barrington. Ariana is, um, she's very young. He's 37, she's 24. Her family is like a high member of society. She there's like some scandal surrounding her so she gets or she goes to New Orleans to kind of hide away from her mother and her mother's like 
um, temper. She goes there with her brother just to kind of, again, get away from like the stress and all that stuff, but then she meets Soul and Sparks Fly. Hello. Um, I thought that I could go one video without having to do this, but um, I realized I did not give my rating for King of Bourbon Street, but I gave it a four star. After reading King of Bourbon Street, I then read The Queen of Dauphine Street, which is the sequel to the series. Um, this one follows Maddie Rousseau, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, she is the ex-wife of Soul. So Maddie is actually like this huge socialite. She is constantly followed by everything or by the media and everybody like pays attention to what she does. Even though she has all this attention and she can have like all these friends, she feels like she really has nobody that she can rely on. We then meet Darren Sander. He's from Texas. He's like extremely tall, very muscular. Darren actually has his ex-girlfriend stalking him um, to the point where it's like a danger to his life. He met Maddie because of like a mutual friend of theirs. Her, like they get along so well. She laughs at his corny jokes. Um, she they like had this really great sexual chemistry with each other i gave this one also a four out of five stars um honestly i darren was like this super suave but like in a boy next door kind of way maddie is just this this she's like a bad bitch okay she knows what she wants she has no problems with um, very aware of her sexual prowess really good honestly like at times it could it seems like it was this eh, not my favorite but it ended up becoming something that i really enjoyed reading next up i read lush money by angelina m lopez this is about a, a woman named roxanne medina she is a self-made billionaire um and she always knows what she wants and she does whatever she can to um get it and she actually wants a daughter uh, and to do that she actually she basically hired the prince mateo ferdinand juan carlos de esperanza y santos and his country is very poor because of like his family um they made very poor choices and his country ended up suffering up for it and ends up hiring him to become her husband and then three days out of the month they are going to try to get pregnant and have a baby and in exchange for that she's going to basically help him um pay off his, the country's debts and to save his country I ended up really feeling for Mateo he some of the things he would say like I was just kind of swoon a little bit he was kind of like Whew. um and some things Roxanne would do would kind of like annoy me but at the same time I understood why because we grew up like really poor so she doesn't want like her daughter to go through that but it was like really good I actually really and like I was going through the slump while in the middle of reading this as I started reading it I felt like the slump going away so thankfully thank you to Lush Money I gave it a 4.5 star next up I also have the physical copy but I don't know where it's at um so I'll just hold it up right here I'll just put a picture up right here but next I read Five Midnights by Anne Davila Cardinal this is um, a book set in Puerto Rico this group of friends who like before they turn 18 like they end up being killed by like some mysterious thing a girl named lupe she goes she's from vermont and she goes to visit her family in puerto rico her uncle is actually one of the police who um is in charge of finding like trying to solve the case and there she meets javier he is a friend of the boys who get murdered and he's trying to figure out what is causing the murders as well this book actually has is like based off of the urban legend El Cuco or I say the Cucuy which if you guys don't know the El Cuco or Cucuy I'm gonna say Cucuy because that's what I grew up calling it the Cucuy is used by Latinx mothers and family saying that if you don't behave the Cucuy is gonna get you honestly this book like freaks me out because like yeah it just played off of the childhood like the fears you had as a child and what your family would tell you i ended up giving this a four star one thing i really again in my review i wrote that this is kind of like weird to say but one thing i really enjoyed reading about is the talks of is like 
the the people from the island them talking about the tourism and how it's like bringing um how it's affected the islands and the people who live there and also the 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 increase in the drug addiction in like the island which obviously i'm not from puerto rico so i don't know a the latinx community because i am latinx um i you see that there is a huge like increase in drug addiction like how it's also caused more drug mm, like more problems because of drugs and more gun more gang violence i actually listened to the audiobook and it was pretty spooky um it was good i liked it a lot um so i recommend you guys read it especially during the halloween season or the spooky season it just especially the it just it just makes it better next up i read baker by sarah smith um i ended up giving this a three star i had a very high hopes for it I thought okay so it's it's supposed to be like hate to love but to be honest I it really wasn't which that's the problem with like hate to love like it's not always actually good hate to love I had really high hopes for this this is the author's debut book and it just did not seem it just wasn't what I wanted the the reason why he was kind of an asshole was like not a good reason for me it didn't justify what why he was being the way he was and just some of the book it just didn't seem so i'm not gonna lie because of faker i ended up having like i was like more wary about the next book that i read but it ended up being for no reason because I ended up loving it and that book is Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore but I gave it a four star. I genuinely liked this. I wasn't sure if I was gonna like this because actually you know what really drew my attention is the cover because it's like it reminds me of the new adult covers but this is actually historical but this is actually historical romance so yeah I like this a lot and this is actually in a series so i can't wait for the next one this is i believe this is the author's debut novel though but yeah i really enjoyed it next up i read akamath um aka a court of mist and fury by sarah j mass this is jocelyn and julie's favorite book i ended up really enjoying it um <laughs> literally in my review i wrote I would always hear people say that Akamath was their favorite book and like I get it because I do um, but this is the second book in the Akatar series it follows Feyre in the aftermath of what happened in Akatar. I obviously cannot tell you everything but the ending left me shook. I gave it a 5 out of 5 star. To be honest it's more like a 4.5 but like I gave it that half star. The last book that I read is Heidi's Guide to Four Letter Words by Tara Savek and Andy Arndt. This I ended up listening to the audiobook because it was available on Audible Escape. Okay. So Heidi used to be um, a kindergarten teacher but then she was fired and shortly afterwards she gets like she starts to do this podcast called Heidi's Discount erotica um where she read like steamy scenes in from romance books she started off as like very shy and timid she never really did what she wanted to do she does it to get her confidence and honestly i was like very proud oddly enough for a book or for a character but you know she seems like she was your girl next door he gave this I would give this a 3.75 um it was really short and some of the things I got this wasn't really it wasn't a book that I I don't know I don't know how to describe it but it was a 3.75 it was really cute and honestly very short to read um which is no fault of theirs it was just like a feel-good book okay so those are all of the books that I read in September and October this is gonna be a really blah book video to edit but uh, I hope you enjoyed this video be sure to like comment subscribe if you want to and I'll see you in my next video bye